just um, a couple of verses, two or three maybe. And then I'm going to share a uh, thought with you that I think is really one of the biggest issues of our day among God's people. Verse 15, John 14, If you love me, or if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. Thank God for that. Amen. I will come to you. And that's a promise too, friend. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. And I'm glad we still can. Amen. Because I live. And we ought to run around here and shout glory till the sun goes down because of that. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in, in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. I'm going to stop there. Verse 15 is my text. Jesus says in the very first part of that verse, If ye love me. This morning when I got in my study and I read that, Brother Terry, I thought, why, why, for Jesus to doubt after everything that he had done and still he didn't know for sure yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. if they really loved him. Yeah, right. that's good. There was something in his mind that caused him to <laughs> contemplate the idea that I'm not really sure if you love me or not. There had been no proof or evidence that he had seen from their life whether or not they really did love Jesus. That's my thought this morning is do we really love Jesus? Or do you really love Jesus? I think it will be evident in the life of the one that really does have a love for Jesus. Somebody would ask, well, why should we love Jesus? He's the Savior of the world. That's why you ought to love Jesus. And why would He even have to doubt that we would love Him when everything that He has done for you and I? Yet, I wonder if He doubts our love for Him. I've got to admit, I don't always love Him like I should. I'm not going to be one to stand up here and point my finger at all of y'all, however how many of y'all are here, and act like I love Him more than you do. I do believe there's some people here that really do love the Lord. But I think sometimes we struggle with that because of everything we deal with in our life. We struggle with our love for Jesus. But when His love is evident in our life, there will be evidence of that love. I believe if a man or woman really loves Jesus, I think it would help our marriage. I think if a man or woman really loves Jesus, they're going to be faithful to His house. I think if a person really loves Jesus, they're going to love their brother. I think if a person really loves Jesus, then they're not going to hold a grudge very long. Amen. Notice I said very long. <laughs> I believe if a person really loves Jesus, they're going to tie. I believe if a person really loves Jesus, they're going to do what they can to share the gospel in this world. I believe if a person really loves Jesus, they're going to have a heart and an attitude to worship Him when it comes time to. And that's any time. <laughs> I believe if a person really loves Jesus, they're not just going to act like it at church on Sunday. They're going to act like it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I believe if a person really loves Jesus, Stop all the line. I believe if a person really loves Jesus, it will be evident in their life. If they really love Jesus, I think a husband's going to love his wife. And if a child really loves Jesus, 
I was up here a while ago with three little boys. Me and Shane was singing in the choir. And I noticed one of Rebecca and Frankie's boys. I can't remember. I know Bryce and that little one said, what's his name? Riley. Riley. He was holding his hand up in there and looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going just like that. Amen, buddy. Yeah. I believe if a family really loves Jesus, you're going to make your kids go to church whether they want to or not. <laughs> I believe if a person really loves Jesus, they're going to show their love for Jesus and they're not going to be ashamed of it. Do we really love Jesus? I think that's one of the things that is hindering revival and a move of God in our churches all across America. We're in love with so many other things. And notice I said things. We're in love with money. We're obsessed with houses. We're losing sleep over We're in love with all of these things. Motorcycles and four-wheelers and boats, of which I'm going to have to purchase another one before long. But we're in love with all these other things and we come to church and that boat has surely it's done things and I've been able to find rest and peace inside a boat. That deer stand from the elements of this world. It keeps me warm in the winter and cool in the summer. I have all the everything I need. That car or that truck, it gets me from one place to the other. And the money that we have, it pays our bills and buys things that we need and even we don't need. But I should not be in love with that as much as I ought to be in love. We come to a point in the time where we fall more in love with the blessing than we do the blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Jesus was sharing with them, and it's amazing in this chapter here some things that he was really trying to get their attention, and he lists several things as to why they ought to love him. And then he asked the question, if you love me. There's several things mentioned in this chapter on why we ought to love Jesus. <laughs> and what I want to do today, when you leave here, if you're lost and undone and you don't know Jesus, I want you to understand that He loves you. Amen. And if you're a child of God, when you leave here today, I want that love to be created in your heart to where you love Him more than you did when you got here. I had a pastor tell me years ago I was preaching up in the mountains of North Carolina at a Bethel Baptist church and he told me, he said, son, you get your people in love with Jesus and that'll solve all your problems. He said, you ain't got to preach on a bunch of stuff. If you'll just get them in love with yeah. Jesus, yeah. that'll stop the gossip, yeah. that'll stop the whore money, yeah. that'll stop the cheating and the lying yeah. and the cussing and the God robbing and everything else. Yeah. If we just get in love with Jesus, that'll solve Just had a love for Jesus. Amen. What are some things that Jesus shared with you and I that ought to cause us? And why should we love Jesus? Let me give you a few of them. Number one is found in verse number three. We ought to love Jesus because He's laboring. Look at verse one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'd go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare, that's laboring, a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Jesus is talking to His disciples. 
And he's trying to reveal to them why they ought to love him. Right. It's because, listen, friend, this world is not our home. Yes, there is a place called heaven. Yes. And Jesus is preparing a place for all them to love him. Yes. I don't know how long it's going to take him. I don't know if it's finished yet. I ain't never seen the blueprint. I've heard about it in Revelation. I know there's walls of jasper and a gate of pearl and a street of gold. I know there's a tree of life there bearing 12 matters of fruit. I know there's a crystal clear river coming from the very throne of God with a rainbow going over the throne. I know there's no darkness there and neither is there no night. I know Jesus is the Son of God and He's the light of that city. I know there's no sin there. I know there's no death. There's no heartache. There's no cancer. There's no morgue. No hospitals. There's no graveyards. There's no mortician. There's no funerals on the hillside of glory. And you say, Preacher, why do we love Jesus? It's because we're headed to a fair city. Over yonder on the other side. Of sweet deliverance. And one day you're going to rest your head. And pillar your noggin down. In a place called heaven. Where Jesus has been preparing that for you. We're going out of here, honey. We're not sticking around forever. Amen. I look at this world we live in down here. My goodness. Conclusion, there's a bunch of quacks living in America. Amen. And God needs to stop making them because they're multiplying and they ain't going away. Goofy people. When a man wants to look like a woman, there's a problem there. You betcha. Saw in the news the other day where Bruce Jenner triathlon winner is trying to turn himself into a woman. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Women trying to be like men. Hoping with a deep voice. <laughs> mm, that just ain't right. People right. are crazy. And then they expect you to live with it. You know what I was thinking why Christianity is suffering so much in our day? Ever since Roe v. Wade took place years ago, yeah. and we've yeah. been killing all these babies, some 60 million now at this time. I wonder how many of those could have been converted and serving God inside a New Testament church on fire for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've allowed this world to kill a bunch of what could have been saints of God.
Might as well go on give in and submit now. It makes the journey a whole lot easier. <laughs> and of course it is cheaper than alimony as well. The odds are against our marriages. And why is it so many don't make it? They stop loving Jesus. Amen. If you've got problems in your marriage this morning, your biggest problem is you don't love Jesus. Amen. We look at everything in our society and these boys don't even know how to dress anymore and this world we live in is crazy. Amen. I mean, I don't understand why anybody would want to buy pants five sizes too big and wear them down here around the ring. Get right. it, bro. Buy that boy a belt. Yeah, that boy is preaching. Yeah, Who wants to see a young and tiny in walking down the street? Yeah, and some of you country boys in here are letting it rub off on y'all showing your boxer shorts. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, it's cool. You get there. You ain't quite there yet, but you let them hang down. What in the world's up with that? Amen. You're right. These boys are wearing on them. <laughs> Looks like eight bed. <laughs> no, mini pearl. That was her name. <laughs> Left her stickers are hanging up. When you buy something, you take the stickers off. They are crazy. They don't even know that. Mom and daddy's ain't even teaching her kids. When you buy something, you take the tags off of it. Yeah. And you wear a belt with your britches and you keep on pulling out of yeah. yeah. <laughs> And boys don't get their about 25, 30, or 40 years old and you look at that hole you had in your <laughs> ear and you look at yourself and say, boy, was I an idiot. <laughs> now, if you just don't love everybody, let them be who they are. And that's for, hey, listen, that's fine. But the problem with people today in America, and the reason we got this problem is they don't love Jesus. Amen. 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 That's the problem. <laughs> I'm glad he's got a better place for us to go. And I'm glad I'm not going to have to always live in a world where you got to see saggy britches and girls kissing girls and boys kissing boys. And they're saying, you've got to accept it this way because I was born this way. No, you wasn't born that way. You was born a hell-bound sinner. And you made the deliberate choice to become a woman lover or a man lover. Caused you to make that conscious decision. Amen. We got something going on. I'm going to get off this point here in a minute, but this world's crazy. Amen. We got this one on here close, right up here in the Archdale area. There's a little boy, I think, in the first or second grade. Some of y'all have seen that. His mom and daddy has changed his name and told him all his life, and he's just a little boy, that he's a girl. And I forget what his name was, and I'm not going to call it because I don't, I don't think I should right here, but they've even changed his name and even brought it before the school board. And now they're saying that gender is decided from the neck up while sex is decided from the neck down. Mm. Oh, yeah. So now he's a little boy wanting to be a little girl because his mom and daddy has said he's a little girl. So now they're allowing him to go into the girls' restroom and use the facilities and there's an uproar over there in Archdale. I say somebody ought to be writing a board of education and let them know what a boy is and what a girl is. Yes, amen. And they're allowing that to happen. And the other day they said the little boy in first grade had a meltdown because they're changing to Brenda and his other name started with a B and I don't know what it was as a boy and one of the boys in the classroom called him by his old name which was a boy and the little boy had a meltdown because he said I'm not him no more I'm her <laughs> that ain't in California friend that's here in Randolph County in our public school system And y'all say, preacher, it ain't all that bad around here. Get your head out of the sand. You're living in a crazy world. What's it going to be in 20 years from now? See, she's going up about it right now. She don't even want to live here no more. <laughs> when newborn babies is 
the crying about the state they got to come up in is made. We need to get our head out of the sand, friend. These Muslims coming from other parts of the world. I tell you what's happening. There's a bunch of backslidden people that call themselves Christians. They won't guard the church unless they got a problem. Or they need to bury somebody or get married. Yet the Muslims are taking over our country. And we got a bunch of backslidden, cold-hearted people calling themselves Christians and letting it happen. Amen. If you ain't faithful to your church, how dare you say anything about a Muslim coming over here and taking over this country? Right. That's right. And they're doing it. You say, well, preacher, they're buying our convenience stores and 7-Elevens and motels and all these things. Yeah, because they love America. You believe that? If you do, I've got some oceanfront property in my backyard I'd love to sell you in a steal. They hate this country, and I don't know what it's a coming to, but I do know this. Jesus is a laboring for a place, friend, to take us out of this world one of these days after a while. And you better be ready to meet him if you're not born again. I tell you why we ought to love Jesus. It's because one of these days the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we're going out of here, friend. Amen. Amen. Right. That's right. I'll tell you why we ought to love Jesus. He's laboring. Let me give you another verse 5. I'm not going to finish this message because there's too much and I stayed on that point too long. And some of y'all are going to cut off. And my pintos might burn and my chicken and dumplings might get cold. So y'all listen quick. I'll tell you another reason why we ought to love Him. He's not only laboring, but He's Lord. Look at verse 5. Thomas saith unto Him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Thomas referred to him as Lord. See, that young and so talk about society, she can't even sit in the church. Ain't that right? <laughs> Probably made a mess in her diaper just because she's so scared of what she's got to grow up That's good. That's good. You know I'm telling the truth. I'm going to tell you what, if I was some of you little youngins in here, I'd get in love with Jesus real quick because you're going to be coming up. This world is changing and it's going to change more. Listen to me, teenagers. Look up here right now. Pay no attention to this world. You get in love with Jesus and you make up your mind right now at a young age that you're going to serve Him with all your heart. You're going to stay in the house of God. You're going to support your preacher. You're going to hold to your King James Bible. You're going to love people.
Where a man's heart is, there will his treasure be also. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Now listen, you know, some people say, well, preacher, why, why don't we do what we do? <coughs> Let me tell you why this building is here. Because our forefathers had a love for Jesus. Yeah, Let me tell you why they had brought a church and started it out here in a little old Christian school or a school right here in the woods that's torn down and gone. <coughs> Nobody ever here. They might be one or two that remember sinners. Anybody in here remembers the old schoolhouse? It's like Linda Hill, Pada uh, Dallas. And, is there anybody else in here remembers the old school? Miss Marge, you remember the old school? You did. Y'all some old people. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to tell you why we are who we are here today? Some of y'all in here are enjoying the blessings of God. And you have no read, no, no understanding as to why this church is still here. Y'all are thinking, well, it's because of just a new day and these more people. You want me to tell you why this church is existing? It's because back in the late 30s, there was a group of people that wasn't many that had a love for Jesus in their heart and they wanted a place to worship Him in spirit and in truth. There was a preacher by the name of Floyd Clark, F.B. Clark, his Bible sitting right here in this case. And most of y'all have never even seen it. Right here is the first pastor of Bethel Baptist Church. His Bible is laying right in there, opened up where he had scribbled and wrote all in there. And some people say, why is it that Bethel Baptist Church is even on the map? Uh, I'll tell you why it is. Hey, some people out yonder in that green yard. That's not going on the glory. That paved the path for you yeah. and I. about this church years ago in the old building. Maybe it was down there in the school. It had a stove and a, or a fire stove there in the middle of the floor. Am I right on that? And I remember hearing stories about there'd be two or three here. One of them would be Flora Lambeth. The other would be Wayne and Trotter. And the other would be Johnny Hoover. And there wouldn't be the two or three or four people here. Nobody else would show up. They'd come from a distance just to get here and have a fire warmed up so everybody, Miss Robbins might have been here back then, I don't know, Miss Kim, Miss Maddie, that was your grandma. They'd have a fire built up out there so it'd be warm when everybody would get in there. Didn't have no air conditioning, it's fighting wasps and everything else when they went into church. Had to raise the windows if it got too hot and pray the breeze would come blowing through if the Holy Ghost didn't show up and move. Here's the thing about it today. We got padded pews, the back of chandeliers, carpet, we got heat and air conditioning, we've got restrooms with toilets that flush and running water and all the toilet paper most of you non toddlers can even use that ain't all a dime of it. There's plenty of it back there for you to use all you want to use. And people today don't even love Jesus. That people didn't even have a porter. All they had was a Johnny House and a Sears and Roebuck use the bathroom with. They come on to the house of God. Fall washed and hornets the whole time. That is in the house. going to be there come church town. Dragging their snotty little youngins down the road. They didn't care if the pews were coming off. Oh, the lighting was good by that. Because they had a love in their heart for Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Good preaching. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And now we say, let me, let me tell you something. I'm about done, about done, about done, about done. About done. <laughs> Here's the sad part of it. God has blessed us so much in our day that it has caused us to stop loving. That's right. Amen, brother. You're right. God will bless you with a good job and make a bunch of money. What's the first thing you're going to do? Yep. Get gone. Yep. Right. You're going to go here and you're going to go to God. Or preacher, I just can't be there. I've got to go down here. you got to buy this and you got to buy that. And the whole time, God gives you all that. Oh, yeah. you turn your back on them and go to Great the Lord. Job, brother. I'm trying to tell you what we're living at today. Yeah, amen. Right. Brother Lamb, it's because of our love for Jesus. Amen. That's the truth. <laughs> Jesus asked a question. He said, if you love me, Ask yourself that question this morning. Do you love 
Jesus. Do you really love Jesus? Oh, preacher, I love my church. I didn't ask you that. Let's still come with him, please. Oh, preacher, I love my church. I didn't ask you that. Thank God if you did. I'm glad you love your church, but do you love Jesus? Preach, I love my King James Bible. Oh, I love my King James Bible. That's good. I'm glad you do. But I didn't ask you that. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Oh, preacher, I love you and your family. Thank God you do. I'm glad you do. And I love my wife real good right now. Pinto <laughs> beans and cornbread. I'm getting ready to leave here and go eat. I'm glad you love me and my family. And numbers of you have come up to me and said, Preach, we're praying for you while you're on the road. God, I'm glad you're back. We missed you Wednesday. Whether you was lying or not, I don't know, but you've done a good job of it if you was. I didn't ask you if you love me and my family. I asked you if you love Jesus. Amen. Come on, brother. Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? Do you really, do we really love Him? Go ahead and play this, soon. Stop standing. 